What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Checking out the Pico CTF Capture the Flag competition. Getting better and getting started at learning how to be a computer science, cybersecurity professionalist, elite hacker, someone in the CTF scene. So we just finished up the tutorial, and now we're at the real game board for Pico CTF. On the left-hand side over here, you can see it's kind of a Jeopardy-style game. And that's the lingo and the terminology you'll hear, is that there are two kinds, or I guess really more than that if you, if you can find them, but the most common types of capture the flag competitions come in a Jeopardy style or an attack and defend style. So Jeopardy style is what we're seeing right here, and that's pretty much what's most common. Jeopardy means there are different kinds of categories, right? Just like it looks like a Jeopardy board here with different challenges you can click on, and they're all in a specific category, like forensics or cryptography, reverse engineering, web exploitation, binary exploitation, etc. Miscellaneous, that could be kind of grab bag, really anything or random. As you get more and more involved and into the scene, you'll find out stuff that you love and you're super interested in, and maybe you'll want to do more of that and maybe zoom in on and narrow down on what your interests are, what you want to get good at, and that's awesome. Like, I love web security. I really think web, web exploitation is kind of cool. There's stuff like leak SQL injection. There's stuff like local file inclusion. There's stu stuff like uh, Java web tokens, JSON web tokens, etc. And I think those are cool. You'll maybe get into forensics or cryptography. Maybe you'll do some Diffie-Hellman. Maybe you'll do some RSA. Reverse engineering or binary exploitation. You'll do some, like, return to libc attacks or ROP. Crazy cool stuff that you can get into as we explore more and more of this. But right now, we're beginners, right? We don't know what we're doing just yet, so let's get started with some of the easy stuff. Something we can get our feet wet and learn with. So, as I'm looking at all these different challenges that we could we could attack, um, the point value may be, may be indicative of... of the difficulty or how hard it is. So let's start small. I see over on the top right of this left hand side, there is a thing called internet kitties. Uh, and that's like the top of the board in the miscellaneous category. So let's try that. Here we've got this prompt here. Challenge title is internet kitties and we've got the challenge prompt. I was told there was something at IP shell 2017.picoctf.com with port 40,660. That port number may be different for you because maybe you have, obviously you're running a different user on the Pico CTF game. So Pico CTF and Plaid Portal and Pwning, the people that, that Carnegie Mellon, and the guys that host this game, they're really good about making dynamic content. So maybe some of the like ciphertext or some of the things like the port numbers you see will be different from one person to the next. And that's so you can't really cheat. Like some of our flags may be different because it'll have some hex values like strapped onto the end that are different. That's so you can't just submit my flag. You got to do it yourself and practice and learn. And it's a good thing. It's honestly a good thing. So how do we get to that? How do we get to this something special? Do I need a ship for the port? <laughs> that's a joke. Uh, let's check out the hints here. Look at using the netcat or nc command. Huh, what does that mean? Figure out how to use it. You can run man nc or nc tac h on the shell or search for it on the interwebs. What is a shell? What talk about a command, right? So I didn't, I didn't do a good thing here. I kind of did you guys an injustice. I explained the left-hand side of the screen. What's over this big black box on the right side of the screen? So that is a web shell. It is a shell. It is a command line, or a console, or a terminal, or anything that you really want to call it out of that subset. Those are kind of the common words, the lingo, the terminology that you'll get used to hearing for a command prompt. And you've seen a command prompt before, like maybe that black box on your Windows computer or something, like DOS, Microsoft DOS. And you just type in commands, and you'll get output and things that will be able to work with work with it. You're, you're using a computer, just not with a GUI, with a mouse, and, and clicking stuff around, dragging icons and stuff. You're, you're working at a command line. So you use the keyboard, type in, get commands. So, that's what this is. Let's go to this black box, and let's try... I'll zoom in a little bit, hopefully, to get a good font that you can read here. Sweet. So we want to take a look at, according to the hint, check out the netcat command, or nc. To find out how to use it, you can run man nc or nc tac h on the shell. Let's see what that nc tac h is. So I just clicked in this black box, I clicked in the shell, and I'm typing in nc tac h. You can see right beside everything I'm typing, there's a dollar sign, I'm sorry, an underscore underscore John Hammond, because that's my username, and your username will probably be there, at shell web. 
and that's got to be the host name or like the computer name for this for the shell server for what we're trying to to work on. So it also gives us a little tilde, which is the directory that we in at the moment. And you may not know that okay, that tilde or that squiggly line is shorthand for our home directory. And you may not know that because you don't always use Linux, and that's okay. Because right now, inside this black box, inside this shell, we're in Linux. We're running Linux commands and not Windows. So because I'm on my Windows computer, I'm still just using a web browser, and I'm in a web shell that I can type and interact with and do things with, but I'm doing that because it's on their computer. The shell server that we have access to is running Linux and we're able to use just a program in simulated software to, to work with it. So we're on Linux inside this box. Linux is awesome and Linux is where we're going to actually do most of our capture the flag cybersecurity hacking stuff. And we'll get into that super duper soon. I want to get your feet wet to get into it. But for right now, we got to get into the idea of commands, command line command line arguments, input and output, standard output, standard input, stuff like that. So let's try NC TAC H, whatever that is. Looks like it will connect to somewhere, whatever, listen for inbound, blah, blah, blah. And it gives us other TAC options that we could give to the program or have it do things. These square braces can say things that it's not like used to, that are optional for the program to run. Like you can see the TAC could be TAC H or any of them, blah, blah, blah. And these are all the things that we could do with the description on the right-hand side and how you do it in the syntax on the left-hand side. So this doesn't give me a whole lot of understanding. So let's try man and see like they suggested. Whoa, looks like we get a lot more text here. And I'll zoom out a little bit so this can be seen. Cool. So the man command will return manuals or like man pages or pages of a manual referred to as man pages of how a command or how things particularly work. And they're awesome. Like you want those. You, If you want to learn, you can read through the man pages and they're always installed and typically always available on a Linux system. So this command NC or netcat is nicknamed the TCP and IP Swiss Army Knife. So we can do a whole lot of stuff. It's a simple Unix utility, Unix being Linux, essentially, which reads and writes data across a network connection using the TCP or UDP protocol. Okay, maybe you don't know the TCP or UDP protocols just yet. That's okay. You don't have to. Right now, we're just going to see if we can take advantage of this program, of this tool, because NC, that command, is a program. It is a tool. It, it is like literally a computer program. It's a binary another word for it, just a computer thing that we can execute and have it do things for us. So, at the same time, it's a feature-rich network debugging and exploration tool, since it can create almost kind of any kind of connection you would need and have several interesting built-in capabilities. Wow, that's a lot of text, blah, blah, blah. Let's use the arrow keys or hit enter a little bit to actually move through this uh, man page, and you can use the up key if you want to to move through it, etc. Page up and page down will also look through it, and it shows some examples, but for several Netcat recipes, please see forward slash all this stuff and whatever. That may be maybe biting off more than we can chew here. Let's just figure out how to use it through that help page. I uh, can hit Q to quit. You can see down at the very bottom it says Q to quit. So just like that, the help page that we saw when we saw TAC H, that will show us how to use it, right? Netcat with options that are optional. So we don't need, because those square braces, we don't need those. The host name, okay, that should be shell2017.picoctf.com, right? Because that's the computer, that's the server that we're trying to connect to. And then the port, or however many ports. So is that it? Do we just write netcat or nc uh, shell2017.picoctf.com and then a space to separate these because these are arguments. These these things separated by spaces are the arguments or the parameters that we give to the program or the command, the command being netcat. So netcat, the command always comes first, and then the arguments are what follow, the arguments or parameters, another synonym. So the next port, the next argument that we want to give it is whatever your port is, but in my case, it's 40,660. So I hit enter to connect to it, and it says, yay, you made it. Take a flag. 
And this string of numbers and characters is a flag. That's what we want to submit to, okay, get points for this challenge. So let's uh, select all that. Let's right click to copy it and scroll down here. Let's paste it in the bottom right. We can paste. I don't know why that didn't copy, so we'll do that again. Copy. Is that going to work at all for me? Paste. No. Okay, I'm going to try using... Oh, I hit refresh. Whoops. I'm going to try... I tried using the control C and control V, uh, the keyboard commands, and I think that look like it was going to work for me. If I submit it there, okay, cool. Hit submit. Sweet. Challenge solved. You are up 10 points. And that's it. We did it. We solved our first real capture the flag challenge by just by learning, just by reading about how to use a tool. In this case, they were nice enough to explain to us, here's, here, here's what you should do. Here's how you can attack this problem. But read a little bit. Learn about how to use it. And then try something, experiment, learn, poke around and tinker, see if you can get some magic to happen. And we were able to successfully connect to a host name and port. We connected to a service. And now we're moving on. That's a skill that we're going to see time and time again in capture the flag competitions. You're going to netcat to services, netcat to programs all the time. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. Hope you're enjoying this. Um, hey, I got to give a shout out to my supporters, the people that love me on Patreon, Spencer Clark, Gal Horowitz, Suzuki Attila, Orgoloth, the Unruly, Destroyer of Worlds, Bastion of Terror. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for uh, spreading the love and really just being willing to go on this adventure with me. One dollar or more will get you a shout out in this video or any of the other videos just like this at the end. Um, Five dollars or more will get you early access to anything I put on YouTube just a little bit earlier because YouTube uh, will schedule them and you'll have may have a lot of time in waiting for a video to be released when I've already got it recorded and it's ready to go. Um, hey, if you did like this video, please press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment letting me know what else you'd like to see, how you solve this, what other cool things we can do. Um, and if you're willing to subscribe, and if you really want to support me, check me out on Patreon. Thanks so much, guys. See you in the next video.